One of the problems we see on the mid-range engines, that would be the ISBs, the QSBs, ISCs, QSBs, anything that has EGR, is we see uh, plugging of those internal drilled passages that are in the intake housing. And when they plug up, we don't always know that by the way the vehicle runs or by fault lights coming on, but the system starts to shift into an abnormal running uh, range in the sense that we're, you'll end up flowing usually too much EGR, and then you end up with after treatment problems after that. Because if you flow too much EGR, then you don't have enough oxygen to burn all the fuel that's going in the cylinder. If you don't burn the fuel, it comes out as black smoke because black smoke is unburned fuel. Got to have the oxygen to burn all the fuel. If the engine thinks it's putting in a small amount of EGR when it's putting in a lot of EGR, then what happens is it puts in a lot of fuel because it thinks there's a lot of oxygen and there's not. So we can't see it because we've got a diesel particulate filter, but the engine smoking black, sometimes pretty bad all day long. And the next thing you know, you've got the guy on the side of the road and the stop engine lights on, the after treatment's plugged, and it's just a mess. So let's take a look and see what goes on when all this process is going on and how we could see this in a few snapshots or, or sections of data log. So here's our fault snapshot. I know it's enough to make it go crazy. There's so many of them and there are many different uh, fault numbers. But if we look over at time since first fault and last fault, the stuff that's 140 hours not worried about, remember, uh, in this in this machine, a lot of the older faults weren't cleared. We're really concerned about what happened in the last 25 hours. And today, uh, there was a couple different things that went on in the last 25 hours. We're going to look at specifically the exhaust gas recirculation differential pressure. And we've got 3389 active, and that's telling us that the EGR system has an abnormal rate of change. And what that means is, is that the numbers, the values are not behaving like they normally do. And then we've got up at the top, uh, 3361, intake manifold pressure, abnormal rate of change. That can happen when the EGR system has problems because the VGT is going to be moving around trying to make more exhaust pressure to drive EGR. And then up at the very top, 1866, um, EGR differential pressure was data, erratic, intermittent, or incorrect. In other words, it fell outside of the normal limits of what's acceptable to the ECM. So let's take a look at our sec second uh, hint here. This is sections of a data log, and I moved the columns around in different places so that we could take a look and see. Uh, I want you to notice that uh, second column from the left, EGR differential pressure, See the negative numbers? And if you look to the far right, percent of load, that's at 90, 60 to 90% uh, load. In other words, pretty much full horsepower. The throttle was down. They were accelerating. We had 30 inches of boost. Uh, we had 90 inches of exhaust gas pressure, 90-ish. The engine was working. The EGR valve was commanded open. It was started at 17 then went to 58, then to 75. Why? Because over on the left where those red, uh, little short red dashes are, it was a negative pressure. So the engine's trying to get the EGR up. If we could pull the exhaust pipe off and look, there'd be a very dark blackish smoke coming out of the turbo, even though the engine's working hard. And we've got 33 inches of boost. Um, that's quite a bit. So we shouldn't have negative EGR. Next, the EGR system, a fault goes active and the EGR valve gets slammed shut. That's why it goes right to zeros. And as soon as it goes to zeros and the EGR valve shuts, look at our numbers on the second column from the left. We're at six inches of EGR. That's way beyond the maximum ever in a normal range. And then it slowly drops down eventually to the bottom to minus one. So what's happening? Well, let me show you in the next slide. This is a simple illustration of how the EGR
works. So number one is the EGR sensor. Number two is the manifold it bolts on top of, which on a mid-range is the big intake housing. And then a four and five are drilled passages. They're about a, a little over an eighth of an inch in diameter. There can be one, two, three, or even four of these intersecting, depending on the style of the intake housing. And then if you could see inside of the housing, number six is a, I'm going to call it a step block. And EGR flow is traveling from left to right in this demonstration. And when it hits that block, right over on the right side where port number five intersects the flow, there's a pressure drop there because of that block. And then you can see the long green arrow on the bottom of the block. That's your flow that's not interrupted. And so the system measures with port four the full flow pressure before that step block and then port five after. And there's a differential there because it's just like blowing over the top of the straw of a straw in liquid. It causes a vacuum. Same principle. When the port's carbon up, the sensor doesn't get correct pressures or readings. Pressure will build up in the ports. And then if the carbon packing is enough, it can immediately release. That's why we saw back on our diagram, the valve closed. There was no EGR flow and the pressure came down very slow instead of instantly. So once we took this apart and drilled out those ports, everything went back to normal and the problem was fixed. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe.